کے لیے ضرور کام کریں گے وجود زن سے ہے تصویر کائنات میں رنگ آئیے اتنی پرزور تعلیوں میں استقبال کیجئے گا اس بہتر بیٹی کا اس فریڈم فائٹر کا کہ اسے احساس ہو کہ یہ شہر کراچی یہ بول کے پاکستان یہ دنیا ان کے ساتھ ہے اور ہر کوئی کہے گا کہ کشمیر ایک دن اپنی آزادی ضرور لے گا محترمہ مشال ملک صاحبہ اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم I would like to start my speech with a portion in English and then obviously I will translate a bit in order to Pakistani media first of all I'm greatly honored to be here and addressing to such high powered august gathering and special great thanks actually the way my mother has mentioned that we are short of words to thank Mr. Ikhtiar Beg Sahab and his brother Mr. Ikhtiar Beg for inviting us to the city of Qaid Yaza Muhammad Ali Jinnah and um, what an arrival it was for me and I am greatly thankful to all the council generals over here from Turkey uh, it was a very powerful speech by you and the Kashmiri people are very grateful to the people of Turkey, to the head of your state for always promoting the right to self-determination for Kashmiri people, to Council Journal of Germany, of Oman, Afghanistan, Japan, Bahrain, Vietnam, Bangladesh, Russia, and uh, to the godfather of the business industry of Pakistan, to Mr. S. M. Munir Sahab, to Iftikhar Shivani Sahab, to Mr. Yasin Malik, who shares my husband's name, and uh, to Mr. Khalid, and uh, to Professor Huma Bakai, to uh, Ms. Shirin Saiba, who's flown all the way from Lahore, and uh, to support the Kashmir cause. And she's been very active with us in rallies. And to all the respectable audience sitting here, quite patiently and um, quite eagerly, waiting to listen to what the Kashmiri people are going through straight from the horse's mouth. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to give a brief intro of myself. Uh, I'm uh, Mashal Hussain Malik, and uh, I am literally, uh, I'm, I'm a victim of a divided Kashmiri family. Um, one side is Azad Kashmir, the other is the Indian occupied. Jammu and Kashmir, so we hail from there. And uh, in a marriage of uh, ten and a half years, I have only spent uh, 60 days, not six months. Because I count the days also. Uh, it's, a, it's a tragedy, but it's a reality that I am not married to the top leader of the peaceful resistance movement of the Kashmir struggle, but I'm married to a cause. And love is blind, love is magical, and um, believe you me, it was a historical fairy tale marriage and a love story which anyone could ever dream of. And God blessed me with that, that I got married to a man who is probably one of the bravest men ever, human beings, I would say, ever to be born on this earth. And I became his life partner. We were always madly in love. I would write poems for him. I'm an artist. I would make his paintings. Uh, I was so much in love with the Kashmir struggle and with my husband. And right now, uh, I have, we, have, we are blessed with a seven-year-old girl, Razia Sultana. And when I was marrying him, when I made the decision, I remember at that time, there were a lot of people amongst his close friends who said that, are you crazy, Mishal? I mean, you know, go for a normal, stable, secure life. You have many proposals. I mean, you know, you're literally jumping into a well because his life is just jails, tortures. They've burnt his home, uh, the Indian Army, many a times, even the entire street. So what are you getting into? And the man is tortured top to bottom. And he has every part of his body is a witness to the torture committed by the Indian forces since the age of 14. And uh, he, he's gone through third-degree torture, and uh, he can't even have children. 
his one of his closest friends said this to me and at that time uh, i had i was about to get engaged to him and it took around 4 years but i'm giving you a personal insight because maybe you people sh uh, read about kashmir you read about the conflict but um, i'm sure you've never ever witnessed talking to one of the victims or the people who are leading it i don't want to be called a victim but yes i'm we are fighting peacefully against the highest occupation of the world so at that time hats off to my mom who is who was a very strict mother um before i got married uh, very particular who i meet where i go and she would always be worried that you know if you are in love with a freedom fighter i mean you know are you that brave enough and that was a concern of my brother as well but then you know the crazy artist the rebel in me would always be following dreams and i had this beautiful dream of my late father um and uh, my grandparents that i was getting engaged to him so when i finally made the decision uh, of uh, it was a spiritual calling you could say um my mother told his friend that you will be amazed that they are going to have many children and they will be healthy children and they will find all the happiness of the world and we are not marrying him for any reason we are marrying yasin my daughter for this cause and my daughter will contribute so hats off to my mother for giving me that strength because parents are the real power behind any person who comes out confidently i think we owe it to our parents and um, journey has been very long 10 and a half years lot of attacks lot of threats by the indians i have been beaten up many times uh you saw my daughter she's 7 years old uh i remember when she was 2 years old um we would go we would visit my husband in central jail in srinagar and um i would go on a valid visa uh, without any police and army checks but each time they would evade that and uh, i would be humiliated and there would be 8 8 hours of body searches to meet the top peaceful resistance leader who's following a legitimate legal path a peaceful political path that mahatma gandhi qaid azam mohammad ali jinnah all world famous leaders following all international norms and there we are getting humiliated body search and what was worse was not the attacks that were happening on me or the abuses on my husband but what was the most terrifying experience in my life which transformed me that was when they stripped my daughter she was 2 years old at that time and they ripped her pampers the pampers that she was wearing they started examining her they started pulling her hair and they started questioning her that do you like india or do you like pakistan with guns pointed out straight at a little baby who doesn't even know what india and pakistan what they mean and she was attacked and she was weeping and crying and it threw her milk and eight hours of body searches questioning a child gets hungry and she was starving and i was crying i was helpless because there was so much of indian occupation and i was worried that if i create a scene what if they attack my husband or us and what if we can't see him again so when i came to pakistan after that because there were many attacks on my daughter on the last trip in 2014 came back i decided that i'm not going to play the victim card anymore i'm not going to suffer in silence i am going to become a voice for my people because my mother happens to be living in pakistan and i was getting visa delays over there and then many a times getting a lot of threats for my daughter and for yasin so i decided that instead of weeping let's become a hope for my people let's raise their voice let's bring it to the globe because our issue is not limited to india and pakistan it is a global issue a globally recognized issue related to global citizens global leaders global opinion makers and that's when i decided that even though i am living like a half widow though i know my husband is alive but i'm not allowed to get in touch with him and right now the price that he's paying for this peaceful struggle is that he is locked up the way my mother mentioned in one of the worst most notorious jails of the world the hard death cell 5 uh, by 7 feet he is being tortured there 
not being given any, any medical care and he's facing numerous medical ailments due to years, decades of torture that he's faced by the Indian forces. Yet his path, his willpower in his goal has remained fearless and the commitment grows with every passing day. So that's when I decided that this is not Palestine. This is Kashmir, though Palestine and Kashmir are the oldest pending conflicts in the UN. But this is nuclear, ticking time bomb. Even the place where you people are sitting right now, it's all nuclear. It's escalating. It's going on. It's increasing the pressure. Be it the LOC, be it Indian occupied Jammu and Kashmir, be it over 61 days of economic blockade, and the worst, deadliest army curfew that an unarmed, defenseless nation is facing with the highest occupation of the world. You people all come from sovereign nations with sovereign identities. Could you even place yourself for a moment or a day? Well, just imagine if you're in this home and some, God forbid, some gangsters come here trying to attack you. You don't have any army or your guards to protect you. They put a clamp down on the internet, telephone lines. There's no communication with the world. And you're locked up. And they take away all your food, your medicines. And they start beating you up. They start raping the women in your home. They start harassing the men. They start killing everybody with pellets, with bullets, with grenade attacks, with cluster bombs. What the hell would you do? When you're unarmed, defenseless, you're voiceless, you can't reach out to any police station. You have your commissioner sitting over here of Karachi. You don't have anybody. You don't have any state machinery to help you. You don't have an identity. And you're facing this not just for the past 60 days. This is going on for seven decades. I remember in 2010, the, during Omar Abdullah's rule in Srinagar, when he was the puppet CM, I remember now since he's taking uh, the side of the freedom struggle, but I remember during his tenure in 2010, there were babies, they were starving to death at that time. There was no milk in the shops. There was an army curfew for one month, and they had stopped the economic supplies, the food supplies that come from the Jammu Bridge to the valley, and no medicines, vaccines were expired. The same happened in 2016. It keeps happening after one, two years. The cycle, the massacres, the killings, the genocide keeps growing. And now since you have one of, uh, I don't know, I, I can't even call him, an, it's a shame to call this man an elected leader who has been elected by um, India's democracy, a man whose hands are full of blood of innocent people, be it the Gujarat killings, be it the Kashmiris, be it the minorities, and following the RSS agenda, which is a terrorist agenda. I'm not blaming Indians. I have nothing against Indians. I feel sorry for them. I mean, you know, they have to face such extremist, fascist mindset leaders who are ruling them right now, and the seed that they're sowing of saffronization, and of extremism, and of Hinditva. Hinduism is also a very pure religion, like Buddhism, like Christianity, like Islam. But any religion where seeds of extremism are sown, that is killer for the entire society, and that too for India, which is such a big country, secular in nature. I mean, this is like tearing their own fabric, their own Indian constitution. And what he is doing, he thinks he can get away with this, but no way. There are so many independent movements going on over there and what is happening with the minorities, with the Dalits, with the Christians, the forced conversions, with tourists, with Muslims, the untouchable, the Dalits. It's like it's, it's, it's a killer machine, the policy. And absolutely no tolerance is left. And the doves that I know, the thinkers within India that I'm in touch with, they're so scared, they're so fearful, they're all scattered. And the hawks are all together. And if you people think of the Western world, or the people sitting here, it's my message not just to you, but to your leaders. Convey it to them. It's for their own interest, for their long-term economic interest and stability. If they want to invest in India, it should not be short-lived. It should be long-term. You should bear the fruits, the dividends 
of all the investments you do there, but they cannot happen when you have a nuclear flashpoint, where even a small micro nuclear exchange cannot just explode India and Pakistan or the Kashmiris. We are already coffin clad. But the whole world, I mean, this is nuclear scientists, this is not Mashal saying it. Nuclear scientists have said it in their research, time and again, mentioned quite strongly that if this happens, 90% of the world will be wiped out. No humanity left. If this keeps on aggravating, it's going to explode like a volcano, especially after Article 370 35A abrogation. There will be no agriculture in the world, no fruits, no vegetables. With just a click of a button and nuclear codes being exchanged, which happened on 27th February. If you recall, the whole world was on red alert. I remember I was getting phone calls from a lot of congressmen from America, from uh, different countries, from Europe, that, you know, where is Kashmir heading? And I was like, it's too late, you know. You people didn't wake up before. You kept saying that Kashmiris are another planet. But what's going to go on is going to be so chronic and cancerous for all of us that this is the only issue which is so, so global and it requires urgent, urgent global intervention. And hats off to all the global public right now and to the global opinion makers, the editorials, the articles, the international world famous media houses, how they are highlighting the plight of the Kashmiri people and they're addressing the ramifications, the side effects, the urgency of res resolving this issue peacefully, but the trickle-down effect has come down. But very soon, the global leaders will be forced by their public. Even if you give awards to India, it's not about giving awards. It's not that. Nobody minds that. Kashmiris are a very tolerant nation. We want the entire world to prosper. We don't care. We don't do politics on dead bodies. We do it on humanity, on the survival of the planet, on human values. And we are the only movement in the world right now, especially after 9-11, that has honored, I remember that time, Bill Clinton changed the world order, that all issues, especially Kashmir and Palestine, must be resolved peacefully. And it was the Kashmiris who honored it. Because my husband was the pioneer of the armed struggle in Kashmir. In 5,000 years, imagine, no Kashmiri had taken the path of violence or an armed struggle. But it was only my husband who was forced to, after going through the deadliest tortures and after getting into the election process and where it was announced that winners would become losers and losers would become winners. So he lost the credibility in Indian state elections. And it was that man who convinced, who is right now, who is starving to death in a hard dead cell. I owe it to the world because it was this world, the global community, Europeans, the Americans, who forced and convinced my husband that follow the peaceful path and you are the symbol of the armed struggle, so convert it to an unarmed struggle. And now when he did that, and till date, he's following those principles. But where is the world? Mute spectators? or just quite conveniently turning a blind eye towards us? Or what? Or maybe your public was not well aware of the lead world leaders of how this thing could explode one day. And time is running short. It is in the interest of the world, the global world, to resolve this issue as per the aspirations of the Kashmiri people. And one more point, which is very, very vital, where I think the people of the world, because I'm not only interested in Pakistan, I'm interested in the world, the support of the world voices. That if our leadership, which calls the shots of the movement, if they are wiped out, how Professor Huma Bukai, she mentioned, how they are being targeted, how they are being eliminated, how they are being you know, pushed towards the wall, how all the peaceful political parties are being banned from any political possessions and how the peaceful political leaders in Indian occupied Jammu and Kashmir, the resistance leadership, the Hurriyat leadership, are being labeled, God forbid, as terrorists by India. I mean, this is against all international norms, treaties, universal laws, UN resolutions. So if that happens, if they are eliminated, God forbid, because they are going on a complete 
wiping out policy okay. then who is going to solve the issue yeah i will this is the last thing so who are you who is the international world going to go to if they want to help the kashmiris if their leadership is wiped out where would you go would you go to every kashmiri and ask them what do they want no they would hate the world they would hate everybody they would say we waited 70 years for a peaceful solution and this is what we get one after the other our leadership is wiped out be it maqbool bad shaheed be it afzal guru be it burhan be it any so many others we lost so the main top leaders right now is my husband mohammad yasin malik and his sayyid ali gilani sahab the old man he's in his 90s and he's house arrested since a decade almost so this is a question mark for the world if you really want to resolve this issue so you have to bring the key stakeholders in it and the un resolutions we demand urgently that this curfew the deadliest killer curfew be lifted 50 years of bilateral talks between india and pakistan sorry to say was spectacular failure for the kashmiri especially they were just photo opportunities time gaining techniques we did not lay our lives for any negotiation we did it for our right to self determination which is a right of every human being so finally now this is the voice coming from kashmiris that we don't want any dialogues we want a final settlement so for that immediate lifting of the curfew demilitarization all the highest occupation killer forces over there that they have and plebiscite we want now the un peacekeeping forces to enter and they keep saying that you know it comes kashmir comes under article 6 of the un so you cannot enforce it but under article 24 and 25 of the un resolutions every un resolution can be implemented by force and this has already come in the security council it has come there after 50 years a debate happened though it was closed doors because it's nuclear and on 27th of february what happened So it's not just going the Kashmiris will be di- dying the whole world and when you have a fascist leader extremist leader who just thinks about you know the only win win ticket Mr Modi has is you know trampling over dead bodies but this the savage approach this lust for power is going to wipe all of you out if you won't stand up so please convey it's in the interest of the global economies because if there is global security there can be global economies otherwise it's a dream it's a dream for india and for the world to invest there in the long term it will be the biggest failure if this issue remains unresolved and time is really really running short as i mentioned earlier in the end i would like to conclude with uh, this poem that i wrote um on our struggle i would like to share because i'm also a poet and it's titled voice of the heart the lamp that lights you who knows when it will suddenly decease the voice of life stoning alone may now suppress no more the wild unrest life is walking on cut glass till the shamadan flickers no more yet the doorways to death cells asylums prisons curfews cannot subdue my manic state mocks wails laments teases illusions they say ask them have they seen the sightless sea this is for all our pellet victims at the glance of sun a storm begins to grow who can but bury the sky under their eyes principles of liberty are left for the soulless these cages lock the human flesh let the human soul sing and caress the flag a mere cloth has marked their hearts who to call who to listen majnu majnu and nothing else mock her steal her honor stone her it is beauty and the empire of beauty from where poetry dwells let the water of dull seep you in like god's beauty 
falling upon beauty. In dreams, Burhan, I meet my brother from another mother. He says, it's same as my Kashmir, thy heaven where I have reached. O oh, my Yasin, where have you gone? It's been six years and ten months since we embraced. How it haunts me when you whisper thy night of 22nd Feb this year, when we exchanged our wedding woes a decade ago. Now the tyrant whips you with a single blow and drags you by the handcuff to such a low. To little Razia Sultana, your final words, my daughter, I'm going afar. Yet she peeps relentlessly thy window, searching the stars, where Papa is hiding behind the moon. I'm afraid it's the gallows of barrack number seven, Tihar, where no light descends nor sunlight creeps in to iron walls. Calamitous was thy night of severance, terrible beyond words. I die with pain, had I to die that night. O oh, Kashmir, when the vultures took you away, all your admirers left you astray. You, ha you gave a glimpse of heaven, as they say, another name for paradise. Our hearts are bleeding, blood dripping from veins. Some brothers of Hitler are celebrating blood parties on the soil so red. Thy rivers are red with graves at every mile. Oh my Kashmir, oh my Kashmir. And the last verses, very powerful, very emotional. It's for all the martyrs of our freedom struggle that we lost throughout these decades. These roses, these blossoms, these roses, these blossoms are also the blood of the martyrs. We may live or not, Mishal. They will always blossom, but never fossil. Thank you so much. اختیار بیگ صاحب اور اشتیاق بیگ صاحب کی کہ انہوں نے اتنی گرینڈ محفل منقد کی جس میں اتنے امپورٹن کاؤنسل جنرل سارے آئے ہوئے ہیں ڈیفرن ممالک کے اور میں نے یہاں ایس ایم منیر صاحب جہاں پر ہیں جو کمیشنر صاحب ہیں کراچی کے اور بھی بہت سے جو امپورٹن وی وی آئی پیز یہاں پر سارے آئے ہوئے ہیں اور یہاں پر پروفیسر ہما بکائی صاحبہ بھی تھیں میں بہت شکر گزار ہوں اور اس کے ساتھ میں یہی کہوں گی کہ آج کی جو میری شروعات بھی ہوئی تھی جب میں یہاں آ رہی تھی فلائٹ میں یقین کریں کبھی کبھی دل ہی نہیں چاہتا جینے کا بھی کہ لمحے کیسے گزریں گے وقت ہی نہیں کرتا کہنے کو دس سال ہیں ساڑھے دس سال اور جدائی ہے چھ سالوں کی اور ایک مہینے کی یاسین صاحب سے مگر لگتا ہے صدیاں گزر گئی ہیں وقت ہیر گیا ہے غموں کے پہاڑ بڑھتے جا رہے ہیں اور مقابلہ بہت سخت ہے اور یہاں میں جب آئی اور مجھے جو سب سے بڑا توفہ ملا جب میں اپنے قائد آزم محمد علی جنا کے مزار پہ گئی تو میں ایک ٹوٹی ہوئی لڑکی تھی ایک ٹوٹا ہوا انسان جب میں وہاں گئی یقین کریں یہ کوئی ایسی میں بات نہیں کری میں ٹرمبل کری تھی بالکل انہوں نے ٹھیک کہا ہے میں حالانکہ کنٹرول بھی کری تھی وہاں پہ میری ہارٹ بیٹ بھی بہت تیز ہو رہی تھی مگر میں وہاں جب گئی تو مجھے وہ سکون ملا وہ حاصلہ ملا حالانکہ وہ اب اس دنیا میں نہیں ہے مگر انہوں نے ان کی جو تحریک آزادی تھی جو پاکستان کی موومنٹ تھی بڑے بڑے لیڈرز آئے پاکستان بڑے بڑے پریزیڈنٹس پرائیم منسٹرز آئے مگر کوئی قائد آزم محمد علی جنا کی جگہ نہ کوئی لے سکا نہ لے سکے گا نہ لے سکتا ہے کوئی سوچ بھی نہیں سکتا انہوں نے جو کیا عمر کر دیا آپ لوگوں کا ہمارا یہاں بیٹھنا یوں بات کرنا آزادی کے ساتھ کیونکہ مجھ سے بہتر اور کون جان سکتا ہے آزادی کی قیمت آزادی کی ویلیو جس نے خود ہندوستان کی آرمی کی مارے بھی کھائی ہیں اس کے شوہر کو بھی دن اور رات ٹورچر کیا گیا ہے اور تحریک چلا بھی رہے ہیں مارے بھی کھا رہے ہیں جدائیاں بھی ہم لوگ برداشت کر رہے ہیں اور ہر وقت ایک 
گھنٹی بجتی رہتی ہے دماغ میں کہ کوئی ایسی خدا نخواستہ کوئی خبر نہ آ جائے اور کہ بے بسی کا بھی جو عالم ہوتا ہے مگر یقین کریں ایسے جیسے کہ سب کچھ مٹ گیا میری آنکھوں کے سامنے یہ وہ والی حاضری نہیں تھی جو پاکستان میں کوئی ہیڈ آف دا سٹیٹس آتے ہیں یا کوئی امبیسٹرز یا کاؤنسلر جنرلز آتے ہیں یہ اس شخص کی ہے جو کام پر ہے اندر سے میں جو کام پر ہوں جو ایک آزادی کی تحریک کی جو رسپانسبلیٹی ہے جس کے پاس کوئی آرمی نہیں ہے کچھ بھی نہیں ہے صرف ایک ایمان کی طاقت ہے اور جب میں وہاں گئی مجھے وہ ڈائریکشن مل گئی وہ عزم مل گیا وہ کانفیڈنس مل گیا وہ ڈسپلن مجھے وہاں سے اور بھی زیادہ ملا بلکہ میں سمجھتی ہوں کہ میری میری ایک ری برتھ ہوئی ہے اور کراچی آنا جس طرح اختیار بیگ صاحب نے کہا تھا کہ آپ نے بہت زیادتی کی کہ آپ نے اتنی دیر کر دی یہ میری معافی ہے آپ سب سے کہ کراچی کے جو لوگوں نے جس طریقے سے صدیوں سے کشمیری قوم کا ساتھ دیا ہے پاکستان کی سب سے بڑی ریلیز پروٹیس سیمیناز اور جو پاکستان کی بیک بون ہے جن کی سب سے بڑی روٹس ہیں پاکستان کے اندر جو پاکستان کی بزنس کمیونٹی ہے اور جو ایسے منیر صاحب جو ابھی ڈائلیسز کرا کر آئے ہیں اور اسلام آباد میں بھی جب میرا فنکشن ہوا تھا وہاں کشمیر کا ہمارا تو اس میں بھی ڈائلیسز ایک معمولی بات نہیں ہے میرے بہت سے رشتہ داروں کا مجھے پتہ ہے کتنی ویکنس ہو جاتی ہے جیسے کہ آپ کا خون ہی نکل جاتا ہے تو یہ جو اس وقت وہ آئے ہیں یہ سب سے بڑی جہاد ہے کہ انہوں نے اپنی سب اپنی زندگی کو داؤ پہ لگا کے کشمیری قوم کے لیے آئے یا آپ کسی حکومت کے لیے نہیں آئے نہ آپ کسی اور کے لیے آئے آپ دل سے آپ کی روح آپ کا جسم اپنا صدقہ دے کر آپ اس وقت آئے ہیں ہمارے لیے یہ میں کبھی نہیں بھولوں گی اور میں دعا کرتی ہوں کہ اللہ کرے کہ آپ کو مکمل صحت ہو انشاءاللہ تعالیٰ موجزے ہوتے ہیں اور یہ جو آپ کی ویل پا ہے میں یقین سے کہہ سکتی ہوں کہ اللہ پاک آپ کو بہت لمبی اور بہت ہی صحت مند زندگی عطا کرے گا کہ آپ پاکستان اور کشمیریوں کے لیے بہت میجر رول پلے کر سکتے ہیں اور اختیار اختیار بیگ صاحب اور اشتیاق بیگ صاحب نے جس انٹرسٹ کے ساتھ ساری یہاں پہ ڈپلومیٹک کور کو یہاں بلایا ہے اور جتنے بھی یہاں بزنس کمیونٹی اور ریسپیکٹیبل لوگ یہاں پر آئے ہوئے ہیں آل واکس آف لائف سے انٹلیکچولس ڈیفینس سے بھی آئے ہوئے ہیں بہت سے یہاں پہ لوگ رائٹرز یہاں پر ہیں پروفیسرز ہیں لائرز ہیں سیول سوسائٹی کے ایکٹیویس ہیں اور سب سے بڑھ کے جو کراچی کا میڈیا ہے میں آپ سب کو کراچی والوں کو سلوٹ کرتی ہوں اور میں انشاءاللہ تعالیٰ یہ میرا وعدہ ہے کہ اب میں بہت ریگولر یہاں آؤں گی بلکہ میں نے یہ بھی کہا ہے کہ منظم طریقے سے کیونکہ قائد کے مزار پہ آنے کا مطلب ہی یہ ہے کہ ایک منظم یونٹی فیت اور ڈسپلن لے کے ہم نے کشمیر کی بھی تحریک چلانی ہے اس میں کوئی پارٹی بازی تو ہے نہیں کسی بھی سیگمنٹ کسی بھی مذہب کسی بھی ملک سے ہر کوئی آ سکتا ہے کشمیریوں کی آواز بننے کے لیے ایک نہتی قوم کو ازادی دلانی ہے اور صرف ان کو ازادی نہیں دلانی بلکہ پوری دنیا کو ہم نے بچانا ہے پوری دنیا کو ایک نیوکلئر جنگ سے بچانا ہے کیونکہ میں بھی یہ سمجھتی ہوں اور بہت سے آپ سب کہ جنگ کسی بھی چیز کی سلوشن نہیں ہے there are no winners in wars people innocent people die on both sides if there's a bigger army there's a smaller army چھوٹی بڑی army کچھ نہیں مانی رکھتا بے شک وہاں پہ انٹرنیٹ بین ہے ہر چیز ہے مگر ہم لوگ کوئی ریزیلینس جو ہے وہ آپ لوگوں نے بڑھانی ہے آپ لوگ ہماری امید ہیں جو بھی اس وقت سن رہے ہیں آپ ہمارا پیغام دنیا تک پہنچائے اور یہ سب سے بڑی تحریک ہے ساری سیاسی پارٹیز چاہے لوکل ایشوز ہوں کچھ بھی ہوں کشمیر سے بڑھ کے کوئی مسئلہ ہی نہیں ہے یہیں سے آپ کو پانی آتا ہے یہی آپ کی ڈیفینس لائن ہے آپ سکسٹی پرسنٹ اگریکلچرل اکانومی ہیں آپ کا اگریکلچر کشمیریوں کے خون سے وہ پانی آتا ہے وہ پانی نہیں وہ خون ہے کشمیریوں کا اور اگلے دن میری بیٹی نے سنتی رہتی ہے باتیں اس کی تو پرورش چیز طرح کے محول میں ہوئی ہے اس نے تو پیدا ہوتے ہی جدائیاں مارے دیکھی ہیں دکھ دیکھے ہیں ہر کشمیری بچے کا یہی حال ہے تو اس نے اگلے دن بچوں کی پروٹیس تھی اس نے ایک اتنی امپورٹن بات کی جو میں بھی حیران ہوگی کیونکہ مجھے بھی سنتی ہے میری والدہ کو بھی کہ کشمیر سے پانی آتا ہے مگر اس نے کیا کہا اس نے کہا کہ آرمی کرفیو آ گیا ہے سکس اس وقت آئی تنک ففٹی فائیو ڈیز ہوئے تھے آرمی کرفیو کے تو کشمیریوں کا یہ خون ہے جو پانی آپ پیتے ہیں یہ پانی آپ ہمیں دے دیں کشمیریوں کے پاس اس وقت پانی نہیں ہے تو یہ ایک انوسنٹ بچہ جو بھی وہ وہاں سے بولتا ہے تو آپ سوچ سکتے ہیں کہ وضو کے لیے نہانے کے لیے کھانا ہے ہی نہیں وہاں پہ پرندے بھی شہید ہو گئے ہیں مطلب یہ عالم ہے کہ جو آسمان ہے وہ بھی ڈرائے ہو گیا ہے کس طرح لوگ کس قلب سے گزر رہے ہیں میرے اپنے رشتہ دار جو وہاں پر ہیں سب لوگ سب لوگ کشمیری ہمارے اپنے ہیں 
तो आप लोग उनकी आवाज़ बने उनको दुनिया के सबसे बड़े जेल खाने से आज़ादी दिलवाएं आप हमारा साथ दें ये सिर्फ हुकूमत वक्त का काम नहीं है जो भी ये पैगाम सुन रहा है आप पे फ़र्ज है और कर्ज है आपके ऊपर कश्मीरी कौम का उनकी आहें सिस्कियाँ आपको कहीं ना कहीं वैसे ना सुनाई दें आपके अंदर तो आ रही होंगी ना कि कौम बस रही है और अभी तक उन्होंने गिव अप नहीं किया वो मौत के मुंह में बैठे हुए हैं मगर आज़ादी से कम वो कोई चीज़ मांग नहीं रहे इनसे बढ़ के और कौन बहादुर हो सकता है जिसके पास तो कोई पाकिस्तान की आर्मी भी नहीं है जो दुनिया की सबसे बहादुर तरीन और स्ट्रॉग आर्मीज में आती है कुछ भी नहीं है उनके पास तो इसलिए इंसान हर इंसान में बहुत ताकत है आप में से अगर एक इंसान भी इस वक्त अहद कर ले और मुझे पता है आप सब करेंगे आप सब लोगों के दिल कश्मीरियों के साथ हैं तो यकीन करें एक एक करके तिनका तिनका करके रेवोल्यूशन आती हैं कायद अजम का हमारे पास सबसे पावरफुल एग्जाम्पल है कि उन्होंने ईस्ट इंडिया कंपनी को कैसे उसमें से पाकिस्तान का जो ख्वाब था वो पूरा किया दुनिया में वो लेके गए तो अब आपने अपनी हुरियत की आदत का और अपनी कश्मीरी कौम की आवाज़ दुनिया तक पहुँचानी है और अमन का पैगाम कश्मीरी कभी जंग नहीं चाहते मगर हिंदुस्तान ने मुसलत की है जंग उन, उनकी तरफ से वायलेंस हो रहा है उनकी तरफ से रेप एज ए वेपन ऑफ वॉर यूज़ किया जा रहा है उनकी तरफ से नस्ल खुशी की जा रही है उनकी तरफ से टॉर्चर सेल्स बनाए जा रहे हैं रोज़ रातों को गांव गांव रेड्स हो रही हैं मैं नहीं कह रही रशिया टुडे टी आर टी बी बी सी सी एन एन वॉइस ऑफ अमेरिका ये सारा इंटरनेशनल प्रेस बता रहा है क्या उन नाइट रेड्स में थर्ड डिग्री टॉर्चर होता है उनके साथ गर्म पानी में फेंकते हैं लड़कों को जवान लड़कों को फिर ठंडे पानी में फिर उनको इलेक्ट्रिक्यूट करते हैं फिर उनकी स्किन को पील ऑफ करते हैं और फिर उसके बाद उनको इंजेक्शन लगाते हैं फिर उनको मारते हैं फिर उनको फेंक देते हैं सड़कों पर और कहते हैं कि अगर तुम लोगों ने कंप्लेन किया तो हम यही तुम्हारे फैमिली के साथ करेंगे हज़ारों फोर्टी फोर थाउजेंड लोग इस वक्त गायब हैं बल्कि इससे भी ज़्यादा क्योंकि इंटरनेशनल रिपोर्टिंग नहीं है तो वंस अगैन मैं बहुत शुक्रगुजार हूँ आप सब लोगों की आप लोगों के सब्र की कि आपने इतने सब्र से मुझे सुना और हमारी बातों को जितनी भी जितने भी स्पीकर थे जिन्होंने इतना सपोर्ट दिया कश्मीरियों के लिए मैं आप सब की तह दिल से बहुत शुक्रगुजार हूं और मैं उम्मीद करती हूं कि इन शाला जो शमा रोशन की है इख्तियार बेग साहब और इश्तियाक बेग साहब ने जो इतना खूबसूरत और हिस्टोरिकल और मेरी ज़िंदगी का मोस्ट मेमोरेबल डे जो मैं कायद अजम मोहम्मद अली जना के मज़ार म्यूज़ियम गई और जो एक नई स्पिरिट आई मेरे अंदर इस अज़म को आप सब बढ़ाएँगे और मैं आपके साथ हूँ और आप कराची वालों को इन शाह मेरे से कोई गिला नहीं होगा मेरा एक एक सांस पाकिस्तानी और कश्मीरियों के लिए है मेरी सारी ज़िंदगी जो है वो वक्फ़ है और मैं बहुत खुशी से ये कह रही हूँ मैं कोई गम से नहीं कह रही क्योंकि ज़िंदगी में अगर कोई मकसद ना हो लार्जर दैन लाइफ अपनी एक रूटीन की ज़िंदगी से बड़ा इंसानियत का कोई मकसद ना हो तो आई थिंक वो तो बहुत खाली ज़िंदगी है तो इसलिए अल्लाह ने अगर मुझे चुना है तो मैं इसको बहुत दुनिया का मुझे ना कोई प्राइम मिनिस्टर ना कोई प्रेसिडेंट ना कोई किंग ना कोई सबसे बड़ा जो एक मर्तबा है इंसानियत के लिए खड़ा होना तो आई थिंक उससे बढ़ के कोई इज्जत ना मुकाम नहीं है तो अल्लाह ने मुझे ये शर्फ दिया हासिल हुआ मुझे कि मैं कश्मीरी कौम के लिए थोड़ा सा जो मैं कतरा डाल रही हूँ उसका कुछ असर पड़े और ये जुल्म बंद हो बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया पाकिस्तान जिंदाबाद कश्मीर पाइंदाबाद एंड पूरी दुनिया जिंदाबाद और बचे अल्लाह करे और हिंदुस्तानी लोगों के लिए भी मेरी दुआ है कि उनको मोदी सरकार से अल्लाह बचाए और किसी न्यूक्लियर जंग से बचाए पूरी दुनिया को बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया अल्लाह बहुत शुक्रिया बहुत शुक्रिया शजर से उम्मीद बाहर न रख यार मुझे इतना मौत बंद कर दे कि जिस मकाम में रहता हूँ घर कर दे हर एक कश्मीरियों के दिल की आवाज़ है जो विशाल मलिक साहिबा ने की हमारे फेडरेशन ऑफ पाकिस्तान चैम्बर ऑफ कॉमर्स इंडस्ट्री के प्रेसिडेंट मोहतरम जनाब इंजीनियर दारू खान जगजी साहब यहाँ तशीफ हमारे मुल्क शुक्र गुजार हैं हर एक वॉक ऑफ लाइफ से लोग यहाँ मौजूद हैं चाहे वो प्रोफेशनल्स हों इंजीनियर्स हों डॉक्टर्स हों इकनॉमिक्स हों बिजनेस मैन हों खिलाड़ी हों इस्लाउदीन साहब जैसी